I was like setting up for this and the sun wasn't out. Now the sun's out. You could just see it all on my one face. But anyways, hello, I am Callie. If we haven't met before, nice to meet you. I'm the owner of Calbeca. On this channel, we talk about business, lifestyle, health, and just a little bit of everything. Today, we are going to talk about how to get into craft sales. I get this asked all the time from like people who I know or who I meet doing craft sales and stuff like that. How can I get, I have stuff that I want to sell. And the other month I got a message on my YouTube saying that they were unsure about doing craft sales. So I'm just going to kind of go step by step with you guys how to get into a craft sale because this is a first big step. So first off, you want to know what you want to sell. Have a plan of everything that you'd want to bring and sell to a craft sale. I mean, it may change every single time you may include another product and then bring it and make sure that you have like a substantial amount that you can sell. Another thing is you kind of want to know where you would like to sell your product. So if it's a certain neighborhood, if it's in a community center, if it's at a country club, if it's at a school, different things like that. For me, I've tried so many different places to sell my stuff. I found out that I don't do well in community centers. I don't do well in legions. And there's like a couple, there's certain areas of the city where I also don't do well. And then the main places that I do well are at country clubs, by the beach, so like right on the boardwalk, out for outdoor markets. Another one is I really do well at schools. Also, another thing that you should look out for is if you want to do a craft sale outside or if you want to do it inside. Because when you do it outside, you're going to have to purchase a tent and your own table and your own chairs. Some craft sales, they may charge extra if they're indoor for a table and chairs. That's up to you. If you have a table and chairs and you want to bring it or if you don't need a table and it's just like a rack or it doesn't have to be a table, kind of anything like that. Number two is how to find craft sales. So there's a couple different places where I look for craft sales. Some of these things just may be to Canada, but also, I don't know, maybe different or some, you might have something similar in your country. So first off, a big thing I look in Facebook on craft sale groups. I'll show you guys kind of like how to find them. Another one, Kijiji. Uh, a lot of times word of mouth or now that I do so many craft sales and people take my business cards I get a lot of emails and be like hey we have a craft sale here we're wondering if you want to be a part I know churches that have craft sales sometimes they have a board or community centers you could look at their boards as well so that's a couple different places that I look for them here we are on Facebook I'm on my business account for Facebook uh, when you or on your personal account, you have more um, access to groups, but I'm just gonna like show you on my business account. So in the search bar, so I'm gonna look up Winnipeg craft sales in my area. This is all that's gonna show, but probably won't show up for anything else. Here craft, they have like craft sales in Winnipeg. Once you have joined a group, now that you're in, there's a couple of things that you're going to want to look for in craft sales or their listing is to make sure that they are legit, to make sure that you are actually gonna make money from them. <laughs> Cause I have done craft sales where I haven't even broken even. I did a craft sale the other weekend and the lady beside me made zero money. Nada, nothing. So there's a couple things that you wanna look for. When looking at these listings, there's a couple things that you would like to know. A lot of times the price, sometimes you have to email them or call them for the price in advance. This one is actually very detailed and a lot of them aren't very detailed, like they're looking for 30 vendors, um, what they have, blah, 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 blah. So on these listings, a lot of things that you want to look for is the date and time, the email, sometimes there's only a phone number, sometimes there's an email and a phone number. So you can either call them and get an application or you can email them and get an application. If you are unsure about 
the poster or the person who's running the craft sale and you think they might be a scam, a great thing is, is if they're at a community center or they're at wherever, you can actually call the place and be like, hey, are, is there going to be a craft sale on this date this time? and see if they confirm if they have no idea it's scam <laughs> so there's so many different um application forms posters just look do your best judgment um if you know anyone does that does craft sales ask them about it in where i live we have a reviews so people will review the craft sales that they've done previously if it's a reoccurring craft sale so you'd always look into that if they're new yeah you might be a little more hesitant about it right so when you go to email or phone someone who is having a craft sale there are some things that you can ask to make sure that they are credible and just so you know like first off you can ask how many vendors they are having at the craft sale you can ask if they have put on an event before if this is their like fifth annual craft sale you would know that they have put on an event before but if they haven't and this is kind of like the first time you're seeing them that would be a good question to ask just so they know kind of like how the inner workings are what other type of vendors do they plan on having at the craft sale and if there is going to be multiples um one type for example a lot of craft sales lately that i've been going to there's been quite a few jewelry and bracelets that i make necklaces earrings gemstone bracelets it all and a couple down for me there has been people with the same jewelry or i've had ones where People have been beside me selling their bracelets for half the price than what I sell. I still do well anyways at a, quite a few of the markets. Just because I have a little bit more of a following now. And I like to educate people on how my stuff is different than others. Another good one is how will they be marketing? Will they be putting posters on the street will they be posting a lot on social media just kind of how marketing because you can do as much marketing as you want like post the poster for the event on your instagram story or on a facebook post to your friends on whatever social media and you may not have anyone come to you so you also want to know how the organizer is going to market because a lot of times no matter how much you market yourself it comes down to how the organizers are marketing are they going to be posting on social media pictures of what is going to be sold on social media's days before or are they going to um, show pictures of the booths on their social media the day of like just different kind of ways that they're going to market another one is will they be charging an entrance fee a lot of times they put it on the posters oh the entrance fee is going to be two dollars five dollars whatever um this is a good thing to know because a lot of times people don't want to pay into craft sales there are some like a lot of times the schools that i go to they have like a two dollar entrance fee or there's also been some that i've done where they have like a two dollar entrance fee but 100 percent of the proceeds are going to a charity that they've partnered up with or um some i once did one where you had to do a tin for the bin so you had to bring a can of perishable foods for a bin for them to be donated a lot of times if you want more than two tables there's extra fees for it this should also be all on the application forms here's just an application form that i have found so a lot of times you'll find the vendor business name if you have a business name you can put it in there what products you sell so list every single product that you sell sometimes craft sales will say if you don't list your product on here then you can't sell it at the craft sale your email your phone number usually they have your own personal name and your address so here it says that the tables are 25 dollars for a table foot this is actually a really reasonable 
a cost for a table. I haven't looked into like where this is, so I don't know if this is a good place to apply yet. Um, for example, this one's saying that they only take cash, credit, debit, or check. They won't take e-transfers. A lot of places I apply to take e-transfers. That's kind of what I prefer. It's easy. And then you don't have to go and drop off your payment at the location where the craft sale is. They also do ask for electrical outlets. Um, a lot of times they do charge you extra. Usually it's like five or ten dollars. Um, it's great that they state on here that there's no refunds. That's also another good question to ask is if you can't attend, is there a refund process? Sometimes they're like up to a certain date, they'll only refund you 50% and then after or like closer to the date, you don't get a refund. Sometimes they'll 100% refund and they'll understand. On these forms, you also like to see the time and the date. Sometimes they have like more than one pages with different, like different rules that have to be followed at the craft sale. Once you've applied for a craft sale, a lot of times you should <laughs> be getting either a week before or a couple days before kind of details, um, kind of like when you have to set up and where to park at the facility, just kind of like housekeeping things. I recommend sending your application to the organizer and in the email, this is what I usually do, please confirm that you have received my application. Like once you have, then I will transfer you the money or I will, you know, send in the money. This just helps me confirm that they received it. If you are unsure about a craft sale, make sure that you go into like your Facebook community tab and ask, make sure it's legit. If you would feel better talking to the person on the phone about a craft sale and to just make sure that it's right for you and that it's legit, ask to call them. Because a lot of times they'll be willing to call and talk and just for you to ask more information about the event. So once you have sent in your payment, you are all good, you are all set for your craft sale. A lot of times I don't apply for craft sales more than six months in advance. Sometimes <laughs> there would be like summer events and people would want you to sign up at Christmas. For me, that's like too early in advance. I hope this video helped you guys on how to find and apply for craft sales. If you guys have any more questions, please let me know. I hope your craft sailing events go really well. Oh, sometimes craft sales are also called markets. So sometimes they'll just play on wording. Also, I do better at full on craft sales than I do at markets or craft sales with direct sellers. So I personally do better when every single one at the craft sale is handmade, locally made, and not direct sellers. But that's just personally I found for me. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below or if you want, you know, anything, what's that word? I'm blanking today. If you want more detail on something let me know thank you guys for watching as always live your life love yourself and be you we will see you in the next video